What's going on there folks? Good morning, good afternoon to some out there. It is the Earth Master on this uh, beautiful Wednesday, April 27, 2022 date. It's about 11.18 a.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 3.1 earthquake out here. Right along the coastline it looks like here of our region that we've been watching pretty closely over the last couple days. Stand by for just a second here as I pull up the latest info. Of course, USGS not showing that uh, earthquake activity down here. Kind of out here around the Honduras and the uh, Costa Rica area. Let's go ahead and see if we can pull up the EMSC model real quick and see what these guys are reporting in the region. And a little bit of activity kicking up here on their map. We'll go ahead and zoom in so we can pick out those threes and smaller earthquakes in the area. See that uh, purple circle right there on the map indicating the most recent earthquake on the map. And trying to get a couple of these to key up here, but I'm not getting them to uh, pull up. But uh, yeah, you can see those earthquakes right there on the map. Uh, let's go ahead and check out some other activity around the globe. A West Coast kind of lighten up a little bit today in terms of uh, earthquake activity and the sunshine at that. It's supposed to be another warm day out here, about 80 degrees or so. Some movement throughout Washington. Uh, looks like this was from uh, last night, I believe. We had some activity up here around the Seattle area. Since then, we've seen a couple smaller microquakes overnight. Uh, nothing significant going on throughout the Pacific Northwest currently, though. A little activity throughout the Idaho region and Yellowstone. Uh, and down here south, it, south of Yellowstone as well out here around Jackson, Wyoming, uh, around the, let's see what we got here. Stand by for just a second. Looks like a couple small earthquakes out here in the middle of nowhere out there in the beautiful forest, 1.0 and a 1.4, although somewhat deep, 11 kilometers for one of those earthquakes. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, Yellowstone overview of the seismograph stations here. Now it looks like a little bit of activity kicking up here right around the central region of Yellowstone National Park. It's going to be these earthquakes right here showing up on the seismograph station. There's a handful of them too, looking uh, somewhat active there earlier this morning. Uh, since then, we've seen things kind of die off, but uh, very typical of Yellowstone to key up like this and uh, spit out a couple earthquakes and then just quiet down. So um, very common for these little, little swarms to kick up. Uh, nothing significant, just a couple small microquakes in the area looks like usgs reported some of them all under 1.0 on the threshold there for the magnitude uh west coast here we'll go ahead and zoom in here to california uh, we've got a little bit of activity up here around the coast range 2.0 near willets uh, some usual activity there around the cob mountain region of clear lake california eastern part of sierra, ne sierra nevada here we go again with this quiet spell uh, yes, we do have earthquake activity here on the map, but it's not, definitely not a standard uh, day when it comes to terms of the uh, the multitude of quakes here along the west coast. It's just not looking super active at the moment. Uh, a little bit of activity along the creeping section of San Andreas Fault, and the same goes for Southern California uh, down here along the Pacific side of the plate boundary. No swarming to report, uh, just a little handful of quakes there along the San Jacinto fault zone. Got one earthquake here in the Fredonia area, Arizona, north of the Grand Canyon region, uh, 1.9 at 22.2 kilometers for that earthquake. Don't see too much earthquake activity out there, but uh, occasionally we do get a couple. Looks like it's been a little bit more active here, Oklahoma eastward uh, over the last 24 hours with some movement outside of the Stillwater area and also over here around the uh, Quinton and the uh, Canadian Oklahoma area, 2.3 and a 1.4. A little activity along the New Madrid zone uh, last night at 2.3 near Blytheville, Arkansas, 11.8 kilometer depth for a 2.3 right smack dab in the New Madrid zone, which sits right here in the area. Let's see if we can pull up the hazard map. You guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. It's right smack dab in that red zone, indicating the highest region uh, for a potential hazard there around the New Madrid zone. 
Some movement outside of the Appalachian Mountains too, north of the, uh, actually just to the west of the Great Smoky Mountains area, 1.6 and a 2.2. Again, some deeper activity occurring out there, about 13 kilometers for those earthquakes. Uh, of course, we've seen the movement here down in the Costa Rica area and the uh, Nicaragua area as well on the EMSC map. Today on the USGS map, though, only one earthquake, 4.9 up here off the coast of Mexico, but uh, into the Middle America Trench region at 22.5 kilometers. Uh, there's the Puerto Rico activity, still kind of, uh, looks like it's calmed down a little bit uh, since yesterday. We did see a little swarm of movement up here around the Puerto Rico Trench. Only seen one further subsequent activity up there, but uh, starting to fill in once again here around the southwestern edge of Puerto Rico. Uh, rest of the Caribbean looks pretty quiet there, according to the USGS. And South America, the quiet spot once again. Uh, I know we got some EMS, we got the uh, earthquakes obviously showing up on the EMSC scale down there. We'll go ahead and pull that back up again and show you guys the, uh, the continued movement. <coughs> of course, got to zoom in once again to see all the threes and twos. There they are showing up on the map. Quite a few of them, some threes and whatnot, into the Peru-Chile Trench. So even though the USGS map is showing well, not a whole lot of activity here, we're definitely still seeing some swarming along the areas around Chile and northward, uh, kind of where this uh, 4.9 struck earlier this morning. So down here in the South Sandwich Islands area, a couple earthquakes, 5.4 and a 4.9. Kind of at the north end and the southern end of the South Sandwich Trench. It has been somewhat active over the last couple days there, including some deeper movement into the uh, trench area. We'll go ahead and pull back the last seven days. See some of that activity there. One of those earthquakes down there, way down there, 114 kilometers uh, for that 4.9, right about in the central section of the South Sandwich Trench there. So a little bit of heightened activity occurring there at that region. Uh, the Big Island looks quiet out there, right? Nothing showing up on the 2.5 map. And believe it or not, look at this. Only seven earthquakes showing up here in Hawaii. And this is the all magnitudes map. A little bit of a uh, little bit of quiet spell going on out there. Nothing major to report. So most of the activity right now kind of just looks like it's at a standstill. Uh, we did see some... Uh, we did see a little bit of activity down here along the Kermadec Trench uh, with a 5.0. I still think there's possibility of a much larger quake in this area. It really hasn't shown any uh, significant movement following last week's deep activity up here and all the uh, sixes that popped up throughout this region of, uh, of, the, um, of the plate boundaries here. We're still kind of watching some subsequent movement here. But... A little telltale sign of possibly what's to come there with that 5.0 kicking off uh, late last night. Um, no further deep movement to report here in the Fiji Islands area today anyway. Of course that could always change. A 4.9 in the uh, or near the uh, Loyalty Islands area southwest of Fiji. That one pretty shallow. 10 kilometer depth for that earthquake. And a little activity south of Australia out here around the western Indian Antarctic Ridge with a 4.6 there. And a uh, little activity up here around Papua New Guinea. Uh, this one here was from late last night, uh, 5.2 at 120 kilometers. So overall, not a whole lot going on throughout the Philippine plate either. Some movement up here around Japan. Uh, most of this is older earthquake activity, including this one. Uh, as far as movement today, we haven't really seen it. Um, both of these four pointers were from late last night. Nothing going on this morning or uh, during the afternoon here so just kind of at a standstill currently um, some movement up around Alaska as well but uh, overall no major earthquakes to report the rest of the world looked pretty quiet some movement over here around the Turkey area Cyprus region that was from last night uh, and yesterday as well so all of those earthquakes old nothing really to report from today uh, what isn't on the quiet side is the space weather right now uh, we had an unexpected crack in the Earth's uh, magnetic field, which allowed some solar wind to stream uh, in and create a, uh, a G1-class storm. And that was not predicted at all up here on the charts. 
just goes to show you that uh, we don't have control over this, that's for sure. Things are going to happen whether uh, we forecast it or not. Uh, there's the KP index up there around 5 that kicked off. Starting to quiet down a little bit, but prior to that, we had some uh, pretty ampli pretty good amplification there of auroras on the other side of the uh, the Earth. Watch this as this really kicks in. You'll see the crack in the field open up and uh, really amplify the aurora right there. Look at that. Kicking up pretty nicely. So unforecasted, right? But then again, things are definitely going to uh, happen whether we want them to or not. Looks like the current KP index now, like I mentioned, is dying down a little bit. We're under the five mark, so under the G1 storm category, sitting at a KP index of four right now. But uh, depending on if this sticks around uh, and if that uh, tilt continues there in the, uh, uh, the crack in the field, Earth's magnetic field, then this could spill over tonight into the uh, northern territories over here around Canada and Alaska. So we will see how that plays out tonight. Um, looking at the BZ chart, you can see that crack in, in the field open up here. This is the BT, BZ uh, <coughs> values. <coughs> Excuse me. And a lot of times when you see this split between these two, kind of noticing a southward tilt, allowing the uh, solar wind to stream in here. We do have a um, coronal hole facing us currently. It's going to be 78 right here. Uh, providing some uh, amplified solar wind speed. Uh, we don't have any major coronal mass ejections heading this way uh, from any of the sunspots currently, uh, which still uh, are pretty visible, obviously, 2993, 2994. But the dynamics are just, man, they just did not. It's almost like, uh, you know, you're getting ready to see these thunderstorms build up on the horizon. And they just, they really never top off like they should or build up in terms of uh, <clears throat> convective activity. So it's kind of what we're seeing right there uh, with the sun. They just never really got dynamic in terms of creating any type of flaring. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm losing my voice again today. Ah, but nothing coffee can't cure, right? So sunspot activity around the bend. Um, there's definitely some activity kicking up here. 2999, right? Now into the 3000 range. Now uh, we've got some further development here uh, and also possibly up here on the uh, far side of uh, this section of the sun. These other ones, like I say, they're just, they're, they're, the possibilities of flaring are very low at the moment. Uh, we did have one peak up into the sea flare region. It looks like an upper sea flare uh, overnight. Uh, these guys are forecasting 99% chance of a sea flare. Uh, M flare at 25% and X flare at 10%. So really no spectacular expectations from any of these solar sunspots. But then again, like I say, um, just don't be surprised if we do see a, uh, a um, an unforecasted event. You never know. But looking at these dynamics here, they're just not set up um, for anything outrageous or, or awesome in my book, I should say. Uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. Um, so there's a G1 class storm predicted here for the uh, 29th. And that is going to be uh, from the coronal hole. Solar wind stream is expected to reach Earth and could be responsible for displays of aurora at higher latitudes. So um, we'll see how that plays out in the coming nights. But right now, um, KP index is kind of slipping a little bit down to the fore. Uh, what else we got? Trimmer activity from last night was kind of uh, mostly into the southern Oregon, northern California region. Not a whole lot going on. About 91 epicenters of trimmer. Uh, Mount St. Helens did show some further activity. And it looks like they still haven't added any of the um, earthquakes that we've seen there from a few days ago on the map. So we'll go ahead and go in and check and see what's going on ourselves. <clears throat> And, uh, man, see what they're reporting here. And a little bit of activity, it looks like. At least one earthquake here, maybe a couple of them. 
see these three little spikes here on the uh, seismograph and I bet you if they were to amplify this uh, chart a little bit these little even these little bitty specks here are going to be uh, signs of some uh, uh, tectonic stress here around the uh, Mount St. Helens area so um, <clears throat> it is what it is we're watching it uh, you know there's definitely some activity kicking up there at Mount St. Helens uh, and uh, we'll continue to watch that no major significant swarming just a little background activity uh, in the very small, very small microquake department range. All right, folks, have a good day. Uh, we will be back here a little bit later on this evening with a uh, complete update and whatnot. Unless something major happens, like I say, it's kind of a, the, kind of in a standstill at the moment, kind of a uh, calm conditions type deal. No major significant movement here over the last 24 hours. Uh, and if we look at the swarming of activity, there's a couple areas to watch, including the South America region there on the globe. It's kind of why I like to run the EMSC model. Uh, USGS, um, I do you know, I do think they're sometimes more accurate, uh, but they're slow in terms of uh, getting out the word of the earthquake activity if, if, if an earthquake does happen. But uh, I like the EMSC model. It does show the earthquake swarms. And uh, like I said, there's a couple areas to watch. We're watching the movement here along the Middle America Trench, South America, and it uh, looks like some swarming kicking up once again here uh, in this area of the world around the Greece region, Mediterranean Sea as well. So uh, sometimes these swarming activities can kind of point to uh, nearby larger quakes within the vicinity. So we will keep an eye on it. And of course, report back uh, if anything does pop up. Have a good afternoon, folks. We'll chat you guys a little bit later. Stay safe.